Welcome. Around the year 300 BC, a fellow by the name of Euclid devised an algorithm that is a method for working out the greatest common factor of two numbers. For example, suppose I wish to work out the greatest common factor of 30 and 42. Now I know I'm writing this as a fraction, I don't mean a fraction. But here are two numbers. I know 30 and 42 at least have a common factor of 1. That's true of any pair of numbers. Uh, they're both even, so they have a common factor of 2. So I'm going to ask, what is the greatest common factor shared by these numbers? Well, you could suggest, suggest doing the following. Take the two numbers. Keep the smaller of the two as it is, so I'll keep 30 as 30. But adjust the larger by subtracting the smaller number from it. So 42 minus 30 gives me 12. Now I've got the numbers 30 and 12. Let's repeat the algorithm. Keep the smaller of the two, in this case now we're keeping 12, but adjust the larger by subtracting the smaller from it. 30 take away 12 is now 18. Now ask for the greatest common factor of 12 and 18. Well, to do that, repeat the same algorithm. Keep the smaller of the two, keep the 12, and adjust the larger by subtracting the smaller from it. 18 take away 12 is 6, and we'll do it one more time. Keep the smaller of the two, which is now 6, and adjust the larger by subtracting the smaller from it. 12 take away 6 is 6. This gives me a common value. If I tried to go further with this algorithm, I'd ask myself, which is the smaller of the two? There is no smaller. So I'd stop. So this seems like a natural stopping point. And in fact, you could said, when you have two common values, that common value is indeed the greatest common factor of the original two numbers. 30 is a multiple of 6. 42 is a multiple of 6. And in fact, 6 is the greatest common factor of 30 and 42. Uh, just to practice the technique one time, more time, let's try to work out the greatest common factor of, say, 25 and 10. Let's pretend we couldn't see it was 5. Euclid says, keep the smaller and adjust the larger number by subtracting the smaller from it. Again, keep the smaller and adjust the larger number by subtracting the smaller from it. And do it one more time, because now we have two values that are the same, and the claim is that is indeed the greatest common factor of the two original numbers, which it is. 5 is the greatest common factor of 25 and 10. Uh, we'll do one more example that's a little extreme. How about something like 13 and 5? I think the greatest common factor there is 1. Does the algorithm show 1? Well, here it goes. Keep the smaller and adjust the larger. Keep the smaller of the 2 and adjust the larger by subtracting the smaller from it. Keep the smaller of the 2, now I'm keeping 3, and adjust the larger. Keep the smaller of the 2, that's number 2 this time, and adjust the larger 1. And one more time will give me a common value, keep the smaller and adjust the larger of 1. Yep, the algorithm is telling me the greatest common factor of 13 and 5 is indeed 1. Now, the important question, why does this work? Well, it's kind of neat. What we're really doing is taking two numbers, let's say A and B, and, it's, and subtracting them from each other. Now, I'll, I'll pretend A is the larger here, so I'm making them A and A minus B. I claim, and this is the key to the algorithm, that any common factor of A and B is also a common factor of A and A minus B, and vice versa. Let me be specific. Suppose I have the numbers 30 and 42, and I'm going to adjust them to become 30, and with subtraction they become 12. Now let's see. To be specific, what are the common factors of 30 and 42? Well, they're both the common factor of 1, they both even have a common factor of 2, they're both uh, multiples of 3, and they're both multiples of 6. Now is it true that 30 and 12 have the same common factors? Well, they're both a common factor of 1, they both even have a common factor of 2, they're both multiples of 3, and they are both multiples of 6, and if you think about it for a moment, there are no other common factors. So this process of subtraction, it seems, doesn't change the common factors of the two numbers you're talking about. In fact, that makes sense. If my original two numbers are, say, multiples of 5, then that will remain a multiple of 5, nothing's changed to it, and the difference of two multiples of 5 is, again, a multiple of 5. If they're both multiples of 24, the right-hand side will again be multiple 24. So the process of subtraction does not change factors. And conversely, if you like, going backwards is really a process of addition. This guy is a multiple of 6. This guy is a multiple of 6. I've kept the first one the same. I've added the two multiples of 6 to get 42. In fact, if these two numbers on the right are multiple of 6, addition will preserve the fact that the multiples are 6. So again, this factor of 6 is preserved. So the process of subtraction, or going backwards the process of addition, will not change the factors of numbers. That's it. So if I do a process like 30 over 42 and do this repeated uh, maneuver of subtracting the smaller from the larger, 
Here have the common factors of 1, 2, 3, and 6. Again, the common factors are not changing. Do it one more time, the common factors won't change. Do it one more time, the common factors won't change. Do it another time until I get a common value, the common factors don't change. Now this is interesting. What are the common factors of 6 and 6? Well clearly the common factors are 6 and 6 are 6 is the biggest common factor and all its own factors. So the common factors of 6 and 6 are obviously 6 and its, and its friends which means the common factors of 30 and 42 are 6 and all its friends. In particular 6 itself is the biggest common factor of the original two numbers. So the Euclidean algorithm states the following. Works as follows. Let's, let's get this clear. Start with two numbers, a over b, and keep subtracting the smaller from the larger until you get a common factor, common, uh, common value. Now, this process says common factors will never change. So the common factors of a and b are exactly the same as the common factors of d and d. In particular, the biggest common factor of a and b is the same as the biggest common factor of d and d, which is clearly d. Therefore, if d is the biggest common factor here, d is also the biggest common factor there. There is one question. Could I ever do this process of repeatedly subtracting and never get down to a common value in the end? Well, if you think about it, of course this process has to stop. As I play this game, I'm dealing with pairs of numbers that are getting smaller. I wish to stay in the realm of positive values, so I'll never allow myself to get to zero. In which case, there's no way I can keep subtracting and keep going on forever without going beyond zero. So if I'm forcing myself to stop at zero, that means I will be stopping at some point, and the only time that I'm going to stop is when the two values are the same, when there is no smaller to subtract from the larger. So therefore, the Euclidean algorithm must indeed terminate to give me the greatest common factor of the two original numbers. Voila!